Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Big Ideas Lesson 6.1, page 216. Our unit this time is on percents. Today we're going to apply what we learn to convert between percents and decimals. Our essential question, how does the decimal point move when you rewrite a percent as a decimal? And how does it move when you rewrite a decimal as a percent? Now, you, some of you are probably telling Mr. Ross, I did this in elementary. I already know how to do it, and I'm going to say good because this is going to be a great refresher. Always good to refresh our minds as we move forward. I'm going to tell you, as we're doing other things with percents in this unit, as we move forward in our lessons, we need to have being able to convert between decimals, percents, and I'm going to add fractions. We need to be able to do that pretty smoothly so we're not fumbling through our other math that we have to do. So I'm glad you're going to listen and pay attention. And ladies and gentlemen, from the top of page 216 in your big ideas, you should take in some notes on writing percents as decimals. The first thing it said to do, the first thing it said to do was to drop that percent sign. One, drop the percent sign. Two, it said divide by 100. Now, essentially dividing by 100, and it actually says this, dividing by 100 actually moves the decimal. two places left. Dividing by the decimal, uh, excuse me, dividing by 100 moves the decimal two places to the left. Your elementary teacher probably told you, and your elementary teacher was absolutely correct, when you're taking percents and turning them into decimals, just move that, percent, uh, that decimal two places to the left and drop the percent sign. That is absolutely correct. Why? Why does it move to the left? It moves to the left because we are dividing by 100. Remember, percent is always out of 100. It is. So that's why we divide by 100, because percent is out of 100. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we move on to our first example, writing the percent as a decimal, we have 73%. So I'm going to follow along with those steps. Number one, I'm going to drop the percent sign, and I'm writing my number, 73. I'm going to divide that by 100. I have to remember, put my decimal on there. I'm going to add a couple zeros. I always put a decimal and add two zeros. You can always add more later if you want to. So 100 does not go into 7. It does not go into 73. I'm going to put a zero and bring up my decimal point so I don't forget it. And I do know that 100 does go into 737 times. When I subtract 700 from 730, I get 30. And I know 100 goes into 300 three times. So my answer is 0.73. That is my answer. And I recognize what happened here. If I have 73% and I drop that percent sign and I move the decimal two places to the left, I'm going to get 0.73. Please remember, I just uh, reminded myself to tell you, you always want a leading zero if you do not have a whole number in front of that decimal. That helps us recognize that, yes, in fact, we do have a decimal because we don't put a zero in front of the number 73. If the number is 73, you don't put 073. So we always want to have a leading zero if we are, in fact, writing decimals. 0.73 does not work. So, ladies and gentlemen, dividing by 100 moves that decimal two places to the left. Now we know why our elementary teacher told us that. So now, once we understand that, we can just move forward and do that each time. Go ahead and pause that video, copy these notes down, and I'll see you in example number two. Example number two, 6%. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that 6%, drop the percent sign, and now I'm going to move that decimal two places to the left. Well, I don't see it, but I know it's here. One, two. Put that decimal in there. I'm going to have my leading zero, and I have to add another zero to hold the place value. My final answer, 0.06. Go ahead and write this one down. I'll meet you on the next example, number three. 125%. So I'm going to take 125%, drop that percent sign. I'm going to move that decimal two places to the left. I don't need to add any zeros. There is a whole number in front, so I can just write 1.25. No zeros in the front, no zeros to hold place values. 1.25 is my decimal. Go ahead and now copy this one down. I'll see you in example four. Example four says 0.7%. Now, decimal is already in there. That, that could throw some people off, but if you just simply do what it says to do, 
Write that number 0.7, drop the percent sign, take and move that decimal two places to the left. So I'm gonna start where it is, I'm moving two to the left. Again, I need to add that decimal. I do need a leading zero, and I do need another place holding zero so that I get my final answer of 0 0.007 or seven thousandths as a decimal. Make sense? All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not already, you need to stop the video and go to the top of page two six, uh, excuse me, the middle of page 216 to copy the notes down on how to write those decimals as percents. Now, ladies and gentlemen, decimals as percents is the exact opposite, or in mathematical terms, the inverse of writing percents as decimals. So we're gonna go in the inverse or opposite order. So number one, number one, it told you from the book, you should have written this down before you rejoin me. We're gonna do the inverse of division, which is actually multiply by 100. And of course, multiplying by 100, it moves the decimal as well. It moves the decimal, and you are correct, two places. Guess what direction? Correct, to the right. It moves the decimal two places to the right because that's what your elementary teacher told you to do when you are taking a decimal and making a percent. Just move it two places to the right and then add, step two, add the percent sign. So that's what we're actually going to do. Now, our first example is 0 0.26. We're actually gonna multiply by 100. I'm only gonna do it one time to prove to you why it actually works. We're gonna do this long algorithm. So six times zero is zero, zero, six times one is six. 2, 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2. Now I got 0, 0, 6, and 2. And I have two decimal places here, so 1, 2 decimal places. So now I can just say that that is 26. Add the percent sign, 26%. Notice that it took the decimal and it moved it two places to the right and created the whole number, 26. We add that percent sign, we get 26% from 0 0.26. Make sense? So that's all we have to do now. Our next example, number two, I hope you stopped the video and wrote that down. I'm sorry, I kind of moved quickly on this one. Go ahead and do that if you need to. Our example number six is 492,000, so 0.492. I'm not gonna multiply it by 100 because we now know multiplying by 100 does what our elementary teacher told us to do, move that decimal two places to the right, and we write 49.2, add that percent sign. Please do not forget to add the percent signs, because if you don't, 49.2 is a completely different number than 49.2%. Always need that percent sign. Go ahead and copy this one down, and I'll see you in example seven. 2.5 in example number seven. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move that decimal two places to the right, I recognize that I do need to hold my place value. I can put my decimal on this one, and if I need to, I can put one at the end, but I really don't need to do that. We understand that we're gonna get the number 250. We don't need to put the decimal, we don't need any zeros to follow the decimal because we're on the right of the decimal this time, but we do need our percent sign, 250% for the decimal 2.5. Go ahead and copy that down. Example number eight, we have 3,000, 0.003. So once again, following what we know happens when we multiply by 100, we move that decimal two places to the right, and we end up with 0.3. We do need that leading zero because we have a decimal before the three. And then of course, we're gonna put our percent sign. So 3 tenths of a percent is what we get from three thousandths. All righty. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to our last two examples. But these, the notes for this is not in the, is not in the book, so you're gonna have to copy down for me as we go. So we're gonna take and we're gonna write this fraction as a decimal. I'm sure you've done this before in elementary, writing a fraction as a decimal, and we're also gonna write it as a percent. So from fractions, we have two options. We can take that fraction and turn it into a decimal and then apply what we just reminded ourselves how to do, take that decimal and turn it into a percent. So let's do that first. Number one, fraction to decimal 
we're going to divide numerator by the denominator. Now, there's not a whole lot of room to write this. You can put it over on the side in that column, the questions column. We're not going to use all of that space. We're, we're going to be talking about that. Don't worry. So to uh, make that fraction into a decimal, we can then take that decimal and then turn it into a percent because we know how to do that. So I'm going to come over here, 17 divided by 20. Add in my decimal. I'm going to bring my decimal up to the answer. Add two zeros on there. 20 does not go into 17, so I'm going to put a zero. But it does go into 178 times with 10 left over, 20 into 105 times. So my decimal is 0 0.85. And then we learned how to turn that decimal into a percent. We just did it. Multiplying by 100 moves the decimal two places to the right. So we can write 85%. And there are two answers. I started out writing that fraction as a decimal first and then turning it into a percent. Well, our other option, our other option, which it works out really well, if the denominator is compatible with 100, the other option is to turn that fraction into a percent first and then take that percent and turn it into a decimal. To do that, to do that, so we're going fraction 2% we're going to make the denominator equal to 100. Because we know percent is out of 100. Now again, this only really works quickly to make your math easier when you have a denominator that is compatible with 100. And in this particular example, 17 20ths, that is compatible with 100. If I multiply by 5, I'm going to get 85 over 100. And anything out of 100 is percent. So that's 85%. And also, moving that decimal two places to the left now, because we're dividing by 100, we get 0 0.85. So we recognize whichever way you want to go, what happens is, is you start understanding this mathematics. And you look at that fraction, you say, wow. That denominator is compatible with 100. I'm going to go that route first because I think it's easier. Or you just divide the numerator by the denominator, make that decimal, and move on. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and write all this down and join me for our last example of this video. Our last example is 1 and 23 25 Now we have a mixed number. First thing you have to do with that mixed number is make an improper fraction by multiplying 25 times the whole number 1 and adding the 23 and getting 48 over 25. So making that Decimal, I'm going to go 48 divided by 25. Get my decimal, bring it up in my answer, add a couple zeros. 25 does go into 48. It goes in one time. Shocker, because we have a 1 before the fraction. And we get 23 left over. And 25 does go into 230 nine times. And that leaves us with, what, 5? And then 25 goes into 52 times. So my decimal is 1.92. Obviously, turning that into a percent, multiplying it by 100, moving the decimal two places to the right, I get 192%. So that's if I change it to a decimal first. Obviously, I could change it to out of uh, change it to percent because I realize, recognize that that denominator is compatible with 100 by multiplying by 4. And I get 192 over 100. Anything out of 100 is percent, 192%. And then moving that decimal two places to the left, because I am, yes, dividing by 100, I get 1.92. Ladies and gentlemen, so important. Either way you want to do it, that is fine. Hey, this concludes our first example. Get that written down. Join me for your quick writes. Here's where you're going to want to pause the video so you can write these down into your quick writes and get that done. When you finish your quick write, go ahead and take a quick break. Have yourself a little snack and then join me for video number two. Thanks so much.